Puff played this beat for me. We was riding down, we was in like, we was like in Midtown Manhattan. Played the joint for me. I was like, we going to the studio right now. But some of you, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, God, like, we, out, we out of here. Yeah. You know, he, he, you know, we in the Azul and all that. I'm like, look, I don't even want to play right now. Like, let's go, Yeah. you know, because it was my song. Because you got to remember, I wrote, I need a girl, part yeah, one, you two, right. I don't want to know. They, I, 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 I see uh, what Metro Boom and them just did that over. I wrote yeah, that one. Yeah. I don't want to know. I wrote, check, I wrote, check it be that song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Check it be that Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Yeah. Them joints come. That's another thing, because I ain't never really been in a conversation when people start talking about the publishing and stuff. I always own my publishing. So I always had good business with them. So you had, always, so you, how did you know? So you were the, the one that, that, well, before Bad Boy, I was signed to Harris. Okay. Clyde Davis signed. On a good deal. Yeah. So I, you got yeah. the business aspect I'm always, and like, learned all I, that. I learned the business before I got in there. Same okay. thing with street, anything. Mm. You ain't gonna just jump off the porch and be, you know, freestyling. Right. So you gotta know what you're getting into. So What's up, it's a buddy? business. Yeah. My money. <laughs> you know, the it's a OG. business. I was just about to say, he go to Hook Man right here. We can hook up one yeah, of these. This man here talented. I'm pretty like I said, I don't even like, I tell them, I, I don't even listen to music. I appreciate it. I still got an it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And don't get me wrong, like, you know, I fight, I fight, I, you know, it's not a struggle. Right. But sometimes I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold y'all. Sometimes be left like, I don't murder you. So you don't want to get in the studio, period? Nah, no. No, no more? No ad libs, no nothing. You done? done. <laughs> Is it religious no ass or? Yep. Is it a, what, what, what's music saying, what? Well, the instruments is what's, um, you know, not permissible. Right, the right. The voice is yours, you know, right. he's given that. Right. So like spoken word, poetry, stuff like that is permissible for Muslims. Right. But it's the instruments. Mm. Yeah, because the instruments, you already know. It's harder to get that out than alcohol. You can piss alcohol out your system, but right. you let it be whole day, you stuck. But I done had so much stuff, yeah. dumb stuff stuck in my head yeah. just from Instagram. Yeah, it's stuck. It's stuck. <laughs> Scroll. Look, yeah, hey, look, man. You could be going to the dentist and right. be in the elevator listening to some bull crap. And like, so and it's it's like with the sound waves, you got to break it down to me. Yeah. Is it something like the instruments, it's because it's being repetitive in your head and it's not worthy enough for you to consume? Well, it removes you from the memories of God. Mm. So... What you seen historically is people try to incorporate that into religion. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But if you look at the essence of religion, whether it is, you know, during the time of Moses, during the time of Jesus, mm -hmm. during the time of Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus and his followers wasn't no band. Mm -hmm. So them calling people to religion, they wasn't calling it to them using music, mm -hmm. using any other means other than what was given to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They had a divine scripture, and that's what they called the people to, what was legislated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now when you start using alternatives, you know what I'm saying, that's an innovation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Regardless of how popular it became in certain cultures, but it is an innovation, you know what I'm saying? So those are one of the things that, you know, in Islam we try to safeguard ourselves from. Mm -hmm. It's anything that's an innovative act. Mm -hmm. you know okay, what I'm yeah. yeah. So the statement, you know, from the Prophet Muhammad, he said, "Man, athatha fi amri na hada malaysa men who fahurad." Whoever invents something into this thing of ours that's not from it will be rejected. Mm. So whatever's been, been legislated from God, that's what we follow. You know what I'm saying we commanded trim the mustache, leave the beard. That's what we do. Right. You know what I'm saying. So it's a religion to follow, because it's our innate nature to follow. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying. We, we, we've, we've conjured up independence and all these terms that really we can't uphold. Right. <laughs> Every creature's a need. Right. Period. Yeah. You cannot hold your bladder right now 24 hours. You got to pee. Got to go. You gonna you got pass to out. Mm -hmm. You got to eat. You got, you know what I'm saying? We are creating Stuff you gotta do. You, you, know you gotta breathe. Saying? So yeah. when people are fasting from food, I'm glad you said that. We gotta eat. You gotta eat. But when it's time, it's like, all right, we're gonna do them 30 days. Yeah. No nothing, and it's just fruit and water. What is that? Well, because you lose a lot. Of, I know you, you're gaining some, but you're losing. Now, that's a very personal um, act of worship. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because people can see you pray. Right. People can see you, you know, give charity. Right. No one can see you fast. Mm. Right. 
So mm-hmm. that's actually more intimate. Mm-hmm. Right. Any other that's between you and yeah, God. Exactly. That's, that's factual. I'm doing this and yeah. you that's don't want to see me. DC, like, damn, bro. That's you factual. Know, you slim anyway. It's like, yeah, damn. I mean, I'm, one, I'm, one, I'm a good 143. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You can't look at it and be like, damn. Yeah, can't right. nobody see you hungry. Yeah. We can see you the lost yeah. weight. Because I'm we hungry all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you just looking at people with their food. Yeah, but, but you can attribute weight loss to a lot of things, especially right. the hood. Right. Well, come on, man. You oh, got man. that shit or you own that shit? Yeah. You know what? Fasting, fasting do help you mentally. It can let you know that you can't live without. And that's the thing. See, it increases your gratitude right. for small things. Right. And you need that every now and then. Right. You talking, you talking about like personal fast or this part of uh, Ramadan? Well, Ramadan is actually the name of a month. Okay. And in that month, every religious scripture was revealed. So even in the Quran, Allah mentioned that fasting was prescribed for those before you. So that means that it was something that was prescribed in the Torah. It was something that was prescribed in the gospel, okay. right. Right. Psalms. Yeah. Right. So these are the revealed books that we... No, we 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 are hit. We you know we we acknowledge them, mm-hmm. even though we follow the Quran. But we acknowledge that there were books that were revealed prior to the Quran. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. So you'll never hear Muslim burning no Bibles or doing nothing to disseminate anybody else's book. Yeah, I it comes heard from that. you know that yeah. comes from the same God right. that right. we worship. You know right. Saying? Yeah. So you know. But yeah, um, it's just simplicity, man. Right. You know, we always we always raise the confusion. At some point, you just gotta get to a point where it's <laughs> you got, you got to, I, I think I'm tired of being not yeah. on no shit. Yeah. Even yeah. though you ain't gonna never know shit. Yeah. At that point, it's like you're not. You know, you don't feel compelled to just want to go out and want to go learn something. You know, yeah. they try to make it learning like it's bad. And you shouldn't wander or have knowledge of. You ain't got to follow it, but you can have knowledge of the fact. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's you they ain't got nothing to do with me. But damn, you don't want people just be talking around you and you don't even know who they are. That's a fact. Yeah. What especially, they represent. Yeah, especially you frequent in a lot of different circles. Right. You know what I'm saying? And where we come from, you know, that's a vulnerability. Come on now. You know, I don't want to be a man. They'll pick you. But then, you know then, then, then we'll also be the free pick because they know we don't know nothing. Exactly. Or they may assume, yeah, assume. this brother ain't picked yeah. up a book. Right. And he don't know who we are. See, right. that's what I learned about Atlanta. See, I've been there since 2001. Right. Okay. So, you know, this joint became a hub. Yeah. So Ooh, you came out here good hey, look, You came down here right when it was. about <laughs> Jim <Club, laughs> Shark Ball. Like, I was here well, when, you know. I was in know, second grade. Yeah. 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 I was Shut here up. when you couldn't. Your dumb I mean, ass you couldn't get direction <laughs> from nobody. You know what I'm saying? Oh. So, yo, how you get this? I ain't from here, man. I'm from Detroit. I ain't here. I ain't from here. I'm from Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Everybody like in Buckhead. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't meet real Atlanta niggas till I got locked up. Oh, yeah, you're in Buckhead. Yeah, I was in Rice Street. That's it was like, hi, Lou. Yeah, yeah. Love the album. <laughs> <laughs> yo, as soon as I was in Rice Street, that's where I met the real land. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, I you, you. Like, where y'all been? <laughs> hey, yo, I just came straight <laughs> in. Yo? Yeah, I'm hearing niggas on the phone. Hey, shout out for the Shout out Jay got out. Shout out you. I'm like, oh, yeah. who are these niggas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, see, those were the real niggas. Right. You know? Man, take us, take us back, man, because we can't see him. Act like you ain't that nigga. We can't sit here and act like you ain't that. I think people fuck with Mace, but I don't think people understand. Like, you was the suave nigga who, that I seen first. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Like, take us back. Like, how you, you get with, with, with Diddy and, 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 and get on that scene, man? How you even get into the music? That's a good question. That's man. a good one. Hey, look, that's And a, that lead into yeah, what you were saying exactly, earlier. Exactly. Yeah. Well... I used to um I used to write a diary. Right. You know what I'm saying? And And how important is that? Well for me, see like I was wild, like growing up I was wild. I ain't gonna lie, like I got kicked out of almost every school right. I went to. I had a very intense temper. Right. So in order to go to public school, I had to go to therapy. Like four years, they wouldn't even allow me to go to public school. But yeah. academically, I was sharp. Right. So they couldn't put me in special so ed. So they was always using the behavior yeah, part. Yeah, special ed wasn't just for people behaving. You had to have a learning deficiency. Yeah. So you couldn't just put me in it because my behavior. Because academically, 
I excel. Well, right, they tried right. to do that to me. Yeah. yeah. So the so so the, so the, the the compromise was, I had to go to city college smart, every Monday and Thursday for four years. Shit. To get therapy. What so, age is this? Man, you talking about? Yes. Second grade, third Damn. grade, fourth grade. Like, really, I, I think it started maybe around, like, fourth grade. All the wow. way up to, like, sixth, seventh grade. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? But what happened is, what I derived from all those therapy sessions, I, I learned how to articulate certain things. Because mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't know how to speak. You know what I'm saying? I didn't develop a voice to, like, later. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, people in your, you know, proximity, I know, yeah, they yeah. told all the right. time, but it's like, I didn't have it for everybody. Right, right, You know right. what I'm saying? So I dealt with things. A little different. One way. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So when I learned <laughs> to <laughs> vent, so right. to say, right, it started to suffice some of the anger issues. So I used to write it in three forms. Like I write it like I write it for a teacher, then I would write it like I wrote it for like a nigga in jail. You know, you like, yo, your man, you know your man, such and such. Yeah, such right, right, right. And then I would write it in rhyme. You know what I'm saying? So by the time I went through that process, whatever was bothering me was over. So this every day, I mean, you doing this for four years, and you doing three different- I did it different... after therapy. So you kept, but you I was maintain... doing three different writing styles damn near every day. Yeah, yeah, and, and I concealed crazy. it. From the people around me. So this the kicker, right? One time, me and my man, I bought a car that was tagged up. Mm -hmm. But the dudes that did it did a sloppy job. Cause you know, the car got like three serial numbers on it. <laughs> right. This one. Right. So, right. so I caught a grand theft auto charge, or whatever the case may be. Yeah, and, my, and I left my notebook at the spot where I was getting money. You know what I'm saying? I left my joint in the spot. Right. So my man found the book, and he came to bomb me out, pick me up. And he started saying lines that sounded mad familiar. Right, right, right. So I'm like, yo, where my book at? But, you know, because it was a vulnerable moment. Yeah. Like, it's, it's stuff in there you don't need to be known. Yeah. You know right, what I'm right, Because, right, right. like, you know how it is. It's like, it ain't going to make me look soft or nothing, but right. you ain't supposed to know. With his mind. Right. Yeah, it's just like, shit. Right. Yeah, it's right. like if everybody, anybody found out Tony Soprano was seeing a psychiatrist, on, he right. didn't murder. Right. right. So it was the same type of mentality for me. Like, yo, dog, hold on, where my book? Right. But it started discouraging me. He encouraged me. He was like, yo, you playing. Like, this is, you know. I'm like, all right, whatever, man. In my book. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, Give me that book. Give me that book. Page four. Page four. Yeah. 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 Let me well, this nigga gonna actually read your shit, though. You, you locked up for some gangster shit. Yeah. This nigga at the house, read. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, diaries hey, are, are mad yeah. interesting. Hey, I don't know about six yeah. of them bitches. Yeah. Hey, man, but they mad. You know it, man. <laughs> yeah. Fuck hey, that bullshit. But you know what? It was relatable. <laughs> nah, it was stuff, you No, know, it was stuff that me and, even me and him had experienced. So, like, for example, you know, we go get a whole joint right. from the Dominicans. Right. The eighth of it go bad. In your mind, I want to go up there and kill all the Dominicans. Like, you know, I got to get that out of my system. Right. So that's where the creative part came in. So it's like, it would be, the first couple stages would be a reality, but the rhyme would be how I would have dealt what with you it did if I could. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's really what everybody else was doing. And still to this day doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, they glorifying or dramatizing what they feel they would do, mm -hmm. probably do do, mm -hmm. did do, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. It's just you articulating either emotion that's real, you know what I'm saying, an action that may have, you know, preceded mm -hmm. the emotion, whatever the case may be. But right. that's really my, was my reality, you know? So, wow. yeah, it turned into a career. Because I was a ghostwriter first. I never wanted to be in the camera. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I was scared because, like, I, had, I was young. I toured with cocaine. I was everywhere in different towns, you know what I'm saying? Going back to like 90, 91, 92. 
you said you toured with cocaine. You heard like, like it was a band. You heard? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, but no, I know what you mean. I know cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's still on the cocaine tour, but. These are my nickel bags. Oh, nah, like what we had for nickel bags in Harlem, that joint would go for $20 in another, another town. Right. So you historically, go get that historically, cats know New York dudes. We was everywhere. Yeah, we that is. That's the nigga flag anyway. Right, yeah. right. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, my crew, we was disciplined, though, because, like, we ain't gonna do no local girls. Mm. You know, dude probably... Yo, it's Nav Green here, and I know you wondering why I'm here, because usually I'm on Broken Plate, but they needed the MVP to come for the 85 South team. It's Super Bowl Sunday, and you know what time it is. It's the biggest night in sports, and the excitement is in the air. But why just watch when you can win big with prize picks? Forget the sidelines, forget the halftime, well, don't all the way forget the halftime show, but you need to dive into the action with prize picks. Get started so easy. You register for an account, make a deposit, and pick more or less on two to six player stats to win payouts of up to 25 times your entry. With prize picks, you're not just a spectator, you're a contender for cash prices. And if you're a first time user, guess what prize picks gonna do? They gonna match your first deposit up to $100. And it's available in over 30 states. Go ahead over to Prize Picks right now by tapping the link below and use the promo code 85 South. That's 85 S O U T H. What you waiting for? T Ball. Less or more. Man, are you crazy? It's Big game. Kansas City defense, yeah, we haven't seen nothing like that. Stop thinking you're smarter than me, man. Listen to me. I'm the reason why you got this far. Patrick Mahomes. Pat Mahomes, that's Yo. even more reason why not to take him more. His dad just got out of jail. His He's dad just got out of jail. Definitely more. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp, all right? Hey, it's your boy DC on Fly here. Let's get serious for a second, all right? A common misconception about relationships is that they have to be easy and to be right, all right? But sometimes the best ones happen when both people put in their work to make them great, okay? Now, therapy can be, a, you know, a great place for work through the challenges you face in all of your relationships, whether it's with, you know, friends, work, or significant other, or anyone, all right? Now, if you're thinking of starting therapy, Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge, all right? Now, become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit betterhelp.com slash 85 South today to get 10% off of your first month. Yep, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash 85 South. Go get help, food. Watching Lord Tasha since fifth grade, right. you come in town, come pop, town. like it's, it's right. the money, y'all. right? We ain't right. trying to mess the money, right? Oh, 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 right. Swalika, oh, right? Or Tunisia, whoever. <laughs> I don't know who yeah, y'all is. I was straight on, yeah, I was straight. Right. Bring your own, you know, bring right. your own work, you right? Know, bring a little joint from home, right? Yeah. You At know, least you know she family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and she ride. Right, right. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's out of town trip. That's right. like going to, you know, Spain somewhere. You know, for her. <laughs> she ain't never right. been nowhere. She never been nowhere, you know <laughs> Mall's different. Yeah, she you can't believe see. you asked her to go. <laughs> yeah. You want me to go with you? <laughs> then all the girls in the neighborhood. Like, oh, can you say that, say that word again? Because they like that. Yeah, accent. right. Yeah. You know, yeah. so New York niggas do get the yeah. hoes out of town yeah. fast. Yeah. yeah. So, just by y'all talking. Yeah, so when I used to ghostwrite, like the first person I would ghostwrite for was Shaq. Just like 95. Come on, you talking right? about Shaq Diesel? Yeah. What you wrote? You Shaq ain't Diesel. right. You was writing for Fushnik? You was right when he was... You ain't Shaq Diesel. Shaq Diesel. Shaq Diesel. Shaq Diesel. Shaq Diesel. Nah, not that joke. Okay. Nah, nah. Okay, okay you was that. Shaq Diesel. Like, Don't tell me you did, uh, <laughs> you did it. All right, go ahead. It was the one I think Kobe was on. Okay. Okay, that's okay. it. Yeah. Kobe was on the song with Shaq. Kobe, yeah, Kobe rapped with a song one time. Oh, hey, y'all was trying to rap. Like, oh, my all them, oh, yeah, yeah, all them was rap. Yeah, all the, yeah. They would never let that shit come yep. out. That shit crazy. That's he don't saying. even got a copy of that yeah. motherfucker. But he had a long ass freestyle, and then he was 100 bars or something, and the commissioner was like, nigga, if you Ever. don't, that <laughs> shit ain't even. Drop <laughs> that shit right out now. now. Yeah, like, how dare you? Get the practice, you know what I'm saying? Damn. And put a suit on. <laughs> Take us to the studio where you recorded this shit. Now delete the hard copy. No, give me the computer. All oh, this shit got to go. Oh, they take a hard drive and everything. 
Exactly. Next uh, day, that bitch was a Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> What it was studio? <laughs> yeah. What studio? <laughs> Word, I used to write, take the check straight to the dealer. Yeah. The checks with it, it got universe on it, you just like, huh? Straight nigga. to the car dealer, like, look, man, or, well, you know. Yeah. Right. And then cats, like, cause like, I left the street for music. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I subjected myself to a career that, you know, if, if I'm gonna get it, this how I'm gonna get my money. Right. You ever ghost roll some shit for somebody and they deliver it, right? Like, the shit good when you do it, and then you hear it, you like, man, uh, that ain't what I said. <laughs> that ain't how I said it. Hey, look, right right now, now, I'm gonna tell you, to be honest with you, I haven't experienced that. Because, one, I never wrote on paper. That process that I did when I was younger enabled me to do songs without having to write. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I created a format mm -hmm that we all learned in school, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's a subject, I mean, uh, settings, mm -hmm. body, conclusion, mm -hmm. right? That's a song. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Unless you freestyling, you, you know, because it's like people understand like when you format a song, and this is what I learned. That's why I said music business was a business. Right. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't something that I was, I was love, received, mm -hmm. yeah. popular in my hood. Growing up, you know, I always was received. I never had to, you know, forge an identity, change my hairstyle four right. or five times, trying to find myself. Like, I was always good. So it was like, it was a study for me. Like, how do you become effective, you know what I'm saying, and find your niche is to understand what it is, you know, you do. So mm -hmm. it's like, I think a lot of people, like, when you see, like, like people that used to freestyle, I could take a line out the middle of your joint, put it at the top, and it wouldn't alter the song. You would never know. Because mm -hmm. they're just punchlines. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. But if you have a song that's flowing in a particular format, if you take something out of it, you alter the whole song. Right. And that's the difference between songwriting and rapping. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. felt like I was a songwriter. I never thought I was a rapper. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, I didn't have line, a manager line. with me, like, yo, kick the one about your grandmother. Like, I have a, like, <laughs> a, like you know, you know, some nigga had to wind up nigga with yeah. it. It's my little nigga that he, he speak more than the rapper. And like, yo, kick that joint about right. right, he like, only want the nigga to yeah, rap. Yeah. That's enough. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's enough, nigga. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't get them niggas everything. Don't get them niggas everything. Too much. That's too much. That's too much. We're going to say that's yeah. death jam. And then you know what? You're like, I perform the song more than the niggas. That's when he get to the point, you know? Yeah. Porcupines. <laughs> Pine trees. <laughs> Listen. Too much, too much. The nigga uh -uh. rapping be looking at that nigga uh -uh. like, <laughs> yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, We're saving that. You gotta have a hype man. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck okay. that shit. You ain't never gonna win a battle rap without the hype man. Facts. You need the right. hype man. Yeah. Right. And I ain't gonna lie, that's how like I used to get on a lot of records. Like, even when I came down here and I did the Promise remix with right. Jagged Edge. Right. And you that ever laid a verse and you was too cool on that bitch? Cause you know you had a real laid back <laughs> style. You ever listen to some shit back like, nah, I need to just go a little bit. <laughs> so the one you did, so the one you did for Jacket Ass. You was though. always rapping like you ain't giving fuck if people liked it or not. He's like, I know this shit good. You niggas, you gotta listen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think <laughs> you like it. I can't even fuck the bitches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you see, you see how he wrote it though. Now we see how he wrote it, so he already more confident in his shit because he already knows Fact. I set this bitch. And when your, your first came song, off, you got the fuck on. You were like, the song is cool. I need a girl. Right. That should be what you talking, talking about. Talking about, I need a girl. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because nowadays, it'd be, I need a girl. And they talk about spinning the block oh, kind and of killing the opposite. Yeah, the girl yeah, is yeah, the yeah, chop. Yeah, yeah. The girl is the chop. Yeah, I'm about to put a dick on my hoe. I'm about to break my bitch down. <laughs> Wait a minute. You about to put a dick on your hoe? <laughs> Why? Why? Yeah. Ah! Is she okay with this? Yeah. <laughs> you watch it? Yeah, that's a fact. I need a girl, but I gotta take these pills right now. Uh, I need a girl, but yeah. her dirty. Yeah. Her dirty. <laughs> oh no, bro. That is crazy, bro. <laughs> Yeah, we in a weird time now. <laughs> that's a good time. I ain't gonna hold you like, you know, when I look back, and that's the thing with me, it ain't just the music. Right. It's all inclusive. So like a lot of times people think you could extract one thing and leave off the rest. All right. For me, that can't happen. So it's either all or nothing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? There's no way you could 
to move <laughs> the base of something, but you know, still kind of, you know, indulge in, in the other shit, things yeah. that come from that base. Right. right. You know, because you we all know that. I don't care what industry you in, all these circles meet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you see athletes getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. That used to be taboo. Like, yeah. I, I, like when I was coming in, AI was the only one. Corn rolls, tattoos. And like, he ain't do nothing but when he was at He ain't high do nothing school. but do some, yeah. no. High school shit happened and it's like. That ain't got nothing to do with him. Nigga, yeah. He only you, did corn yeah, rolls don't. and tattoos. That's it. They tried to make it seem like that. But they dug them out. Well, he had the little case, so, you know, because, you know, that, that yeah. Old, that was old, though. That yeah, was before still, all that. Yeah. But that actually, Everybody I think, if I remember, it impeded him a year before he went to Georgia. Yeah, he, like had, to Georgia, do, yeah. he had to go through Yeah, Georgetown gave him a yeah. shot. You know what I'm saying? Salute yeah. Georgetown, man. Yeah, definitely, man. That's real. Because, I mean, we wouldn't have had more AI. That's real time. That's What's real the coach time? Time? For some reason, I still believe that nigga can play today. He was cold. Fucking right. I still believe he can play about two, three more seasons. That nigga cold. He always been like, my. I know everybody got their Jordan, but he was my Jordan. Yeah. Like, I'm 31. I ain't get a chance to see Jordan until he got with the Wizards. Yeah. And that okay, was another so, Jordan. Oh, no, this, this aside, this aside. He was still putting up 20, but it was like, oh, but it's this funny, aside. It's funny you say that because for any, any like, any. Oh, that nigga tired. Yeah. <laughs> but if you think of like any inner city kid, that's a fact, like what you said. You know what I'm saying? Like Jordan was by far the GOAT. The greatest. I don't even get in those arguments with people right. when they start comparing. Right. Yeah. Impact. Yeah. Is it he was, he was the greatest. Oh, I remember when nigga, grown men used to go home. And go in the house and watch this shit. Yeah. But I got, Every Bulls game okay. came on TV. So I got a question, though. Who impact was bigger on the culture? Mike. 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 You just love Mike. Because if the niggas weren't trying to look like Mike. Huh? Niggas weren't shaving their head to look like Mike. Like that whole motherfucking commercial. Niggas weren't shaving their head. Like, Not like niggas getting like braids Mike. to be like AI. I could be like Mike. Not to get braids to be like AI. Sight, right? Sometimes I dream about that he is. Yeah, yeah he I'm, talking talking about I'm talking about yeah, culture. Yeah. I'm talking about culture and image. Yeah. Nah, nah, nigga. Yeah. I'm yeah. talking about culture and okay. image. Okay, now, now everybody look at their feet. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I was about that's to all, say. That's all I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Okay, come on. So look, look. You thought about him this morning. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. <laughs> you couldn't be Mike. <laughs> Niggas said be like Mike, but yeah. you knew you couldn't be like Mike. You knew you couldn't jump like that. You knew that. When you, you saw, listen, shit. listen, let me finish. When you saw AI, you was like, damn. This nigga smaller than everybody. More people identified with him. He spoke for the him. hood. He spoke for the More hood. More people identified with him. Nah, but More people wanted to show up dressed like AI. Nah, he spoke for the hood. Up, Outside up. of the J's? But hold up. You wearing boot cut jeans? Take them off, man. Take what you off, doing man. with your outfit? Hey, Outside the J's? Take you was wearing off, big man. shirts? You disrespectful. Take your shoes off, man. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. If you go back to the like Mike commercial, right. it was kids in every sport. It was athletes in every sport. Yeah. So to be like Mike was to be the best at whatever it is you this is, Yeah. You know what I'm okay. saying? So when you this say, is commercial yeah. campaign. Yeah. This is all this. Yeah. AI had a game Saturday. He was AI the whole time. But after the game, him and his partner then went to the club. Guess what he put on? Some J. Come on, man. That's all I'm fucking saying. <laughs> That's all I'm fucking saying. That's all I'm saying. So Michael Jordan had people shaving their head. Huh? Wait, yes. We're you talking know. about marketing and campaign. Gatorade, Nike, yeah, if they get behind right, you and that shit go oh, crazy. Oh, Mike, oh, niggas eat but niggas. I'm talking about niggas. We knew we just wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, all lesbian. <laughs> hey. You got a point. <laughs> we ain't weeded, hey. dog. Hey, all lesbian. I know, I ate a bowl of Well, first of all, y'all just said it. Y'all just said it. I'm talking about gold. Y'all just said it. It wasn't frosted flakes. Literally, all lesbian. Sixty <laughs> percent of lesbians look like AI. We was eating see-through bread. Am I right? With milk. Yeah, it was <laughs> more motherfuckers getting brains. <laughs> when AI came along, I'm talking about cultural no, AI impact. AI is an image. It's a product of I'm like that. I'm going to tell you Speaking one thing. That came, it came with AI. The baggy shorts. Right. Jordan got fined every game for wearing bigger shorts. He wasn't wearing the joints like Magic and Bird and them back in the day, the right. short jumps. No, he started with them. 
Huh? He started with him. But he started now. changing his <laughs> shit. He didn't have no big cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, look. Hey, this is all y'all got? <laughs> hey, look. They can't get no pictures from some 80s shit. Hey, he probably, hey, look. He probably ain't had a friend. Hey, look. Yeah. Hey, niggas were playing in boy shorts. Yeah. Yeah. Bitch is supposed to be wearing That's why you see him on the move all the time. Yeah, we were just talking about, you know, back in the day, Clyde Frazier and all of them, like, but, you know, that's what I'm saying, like, I don't like to get in those conversations because all of them, him? all of them impacted the culture. Facts. All of them inspired young people oh, to want to be better. Definitely. I, don't, I think AI don't no made credit. people feel comfortable with who they were. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to think, like, Jordan was in the political NBA. Exactly. You know he was, a, he broke, was a spokesman. But he still broke he the mold. He still broke a lot of shit. He still I'm not broke. saying he didn't. Yeah. But when I'm AI... I'm Bluetooth.com and go get your... Hey, man, they didn't never pay me for writing that song, did they? Don't even worry about it. Look, Valentine's Day is coming up. Just pop you a Bluetooth and you'll be solid through and through. They're going to pay me for that one, too, because... Hey, man, don't even worry about it. So February is here. Don't go down bad during the love-making month. That's right. You got to make love all month. So make sure your tool is ready for the occasion. And go holler at them good folks over there at Bluetooth.com. They can definitely get you right. The process is so easy. You just go to Bluetooth.com. And then they're going to make you consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you approve, once you get approved, your prescription going to be there within days. I'm talking about like two Three. It depends on where you live. One of the best things about it, it's all done online. So you don't have to go to the doctor's office. You don't have to have no awkward conversation. You don't have to wait in line at no pharmacy. That's crazy. Let's start there. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. So discover your options at BlueChew.com. Just chew it and do it. Or do it and chew it. Whichever one works for you. And we got a special deal for our listeners, the people that listen to our show. You can go to Blue Chew right now and get your first month free. All you got to do is use the promo code 85SOUTH. That's right. Go to BlueChew.com. Use the promo code 85SOUTH. You get one month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. That's crazy. So visit BlueChew.com for more important details and safety information. And we thank them good people over there at BlueChew.com for sponsoring this podcast. Okay. He is being able to identify. Yeah, but when AI came, you didn't want to watch the game on TV no more. You wanted to go to the game. You know what I'm saying? We caught the game on TV to watch all those other legends, but AI made you want to go. You know why? Because if he was accepted on the court, then we accepted in, in, the, the, in the arena. Facts. Like, we can come up in here with, with this, Facts. with tats and all Facts. that, and we don't Facts. feel a lot of place. Facts. One nigga right. that don't get enough credit, in my opinion, <laughs> is Rasheed Wallace. With the patch? Because this nigga played in motherfucking... We were from cornrows to a patch. <laughs> High top Air Force Ones. This is literally the heaviest tennis shoe yeah, in the fucking... Yo, he said the pass. That is not built to be That's, playing yo, fucking basketball. Yeah, first off, <laughs> he said he ain't never seen Jordan play, so he came in a town like he was going through... Some, some personal stuff. Oh, that's a personal shit. My bad, right? See? My <laughs> no, bad. Like, no, that's, I thought it was a birthmark. Like, that's a birthmark. Yeah, it's a birthmark. Right? Yeah. It, it should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I hope it's... Hey, man, it. first of all, yeah, shout man. out to Rasheed. Yeah, I fought with you, too, because you had the show. Y'all yeah, keep playing with Rasheed, brother. No, Rasheed. This nigga pull up and slap the shit at you, and then land. Rasheed said his Air Force Ones had orthotics in it. Oh. So they not just regular... Like, that's what I thought, too. But I, I seen him on some shit. But what say, you about to say about Rasheed? And I was like, okay. That he, he was not bullshit. He I'm was not. dead the fuck serious. <laughs> he was dead serious. Where he, all the options of shoes to play in, he chose Air Force One. He said that's what he saw his OGs play in. And that's from where he, he was from. He got fine for that shit every game, didn't he? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. They let them play in that? Them yeah. not, they're not qualified. Nigga, them Man. basketball shoes. Who was that that played in them Prada you, World you played Cup? Them bitch, you can play them on the court. Bro, he left his shoes and that nigga was out there in some high top Pradas. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. It was the Gilbert Arenas. It, might, it was either Gilbert. He played in a lot of crazy ass shit. <laughs> or uh, the Damn. other boy that run with him. Yeah. But see, that's crazy because I, crazy, I fought with There's so many famous people from Harlem, though. What, is, what was. What is, what is that like? Because when you think about it, all the people that came from your era, you walk right. outside, it's just... It's renaissance. It's niggas everywhere. It's renaissance. To be considered street and mace and nigga, the whole of, there's Harlem there's movie. There's a lot of history that even go back further than yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, me growing up, I was immersed in Harlem's underworld. 
going all the way back. My grandfather, you know, Rahim Allah, he, he passed away. He was 96. He was tight with Bumpy Johnson. My father, Bumpy Johnson? Hold on, your grandfather. You back there? My grandfather, my father, Bumpy <coughs> Johnson. Mother, going from Bumpy to Nicky Barnes, me being around Rich Poe, like, you know, like, I came from that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when I look at Harlem through my lens, I see those unofficial mayors and governors of the city, not the figureheads, not the people that, you know, you know, wave the banner, you know what I'm saying, or glorify the people we see. The people that I saw was the people who really made it shape. Yeah. And everything that was intertwined with those generations was, you know, the Renaissance, you know, jazz music, you know, we had some of the most prolific, you know what I'm saying, um, activists, all kinds of stuff came to Harlem. So in Harlem, that big, you know what I'm saying? Technically, Harlem is like 155th to 110th Street. Then you got Spanish Harlem on the east side. But from 155th to 110th Street, you're talking about not even really 40 blocks, not counting like the avenues from, right. like, you know what I'm saying, Lenox Avenue, Fifth Avenue, whatever, going away up to Broadway, whatever the case may be. But it's a very, we were individuals, you know what I'm saying? Like Brooklyn was known for rolling in clicks and stuff like that, Bronx, mm-hmm. but Harlem was like, Dumb, every man everybody, shine. Like everybody is right. trying to be that the guy, man. Right. you know what I'm saying, in their own special way. Right. You know, and that's the characteristic that everybody had, whether they had money or didn't have money. You got some of the most, you know, flamboyant, you know, just, you know, illuminated figures that might not have nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you look at the Harlem Shake, that came from a dude named Cisco who used to drink. Cisco. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> His name was Al B. Yeah. Yeah. And dudes used to get out, you know, <laughs> give Al B a dollar, Al B hit the shake, and it's like the kids took it and it became a phenomenon. But that was somebody who was a pillar of our community. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Yeah, so Nobody every, know yeah. that. Hold on, man. Hold on. Yeah, so you you say G- that G- Harlem that. got fly bums? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So so check it out. Move. Hold up. But let me tell you something. <laughs> and, and, look, and let me tell you something. This is, another, the shoe. Yeah, this is another misconception of some of the younger generations. Y'all came in, and that's all you saw. Right. What? When, what we saw? The bum. <coughs> had it. Right. That's all you saw. You saw more than that. Oh, came you up, saw where he was before. That was somebody who used to walk around with suitcases handcuffed to his hand. Or that was somebody who used to come around, had the Rolls Royce, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so all the last we heard growing up as a child, you was got true. to see as the truth. Like, yeah, so, so yeah. The time we I, had yeah. Yeah. I had two Rolls Royce. I had two Rolls Royce. Yeah, no question. Come through this motherfucker yeah. like no yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to y'all, you know, I ain't gonna say y'all, but your generation, he lying. Right, <laughs> right. You ain't had shit. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't got shit now. I might come through and be like, what? yo. Shout out to the man. Yeah, for real, for real. Shout out to him. Be easy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, he was once upon a time, one of them dudes, right? You know what I'm saying, and that's what I'm saying. It's like I came, I was, I was, I was functioning in my neighborhood when the crack epidemic came through. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because like my moms, my pops, they came out of the '70s. That was all heroin. Mm-hmm. So when you look at every new extremity or epidemic that comes, mm-hmm. some people survive it. Some people don't. A lot of people don't. It ain't never been this many people smoke weed. Like when I was growing up, yeah. it wasn't not weed smoking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody wasn't smoking no weed. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I grew up, people was publicly sniffing cocaine in the street, and it was acceptable. You wasn't looked at as like you got an issue. Right. Because you're talking about something that was considered an expensive high. That's what I'm cheap. glad I didn't so grow it was, back yeah. so, so you wanted, so, so you saying people... I dudes that were getting money in the street smoking woolers, which was cracking weed. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Woo-woos. Yeah. Make you dope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, listen, <laughs> the dudes that was smoking it had money. Right. Yeah. They didn't know that joint was going to so take So they wanted the you to right. see them doing coke. They didn't, know, they didn't know it was going to go from a blunt filled with crack to, to a, a pipe. pipe. To a pipe. That shit you know what I'm saying? As a stunt. Yeah, yeah. So it was cracking that motherfucker. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, it was free bait. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. Hey, shit. <laughs> yeah. I get some more tomorrow. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
<laughs> Nigga, it's $400 worth of credit. Till I get some more to buy. Yeah, that's man. funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I say. I grew up that's crazy. with a certain level of. But that's how it was back then. Yeah, I'm bro. telling you, man. Like, that's what I say. Like, Harlem, you know, depending on what side of it you was on. Right. You know, could have been the greatest education you ever received or could have been the greatest detriment. Mm. You know? Yeah. For me, it was the greatest education. Yeah. You know, Which just New York, just New York in general. Man. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, most of my family from Richmond, Virginia. Mm. So when I used to go down there, it was always, a, like, a culture shock for me. Because I remember one time I was standing out there with my cousins. Just to give you an example, like, and they just, hey, here come the man. And just, everybody just disappeared. I'm man, like, the man, I'm the still fuck. looking for the man. Right. Who's the man? <laughs> right. <laughs> the police rolled up. Right. So, I mean, in New York, it was a different thing. Right, We right. didn't care about, we want to stop no police. Police coming through, like, yeah, man, y'all get off the block, man. Put that out. I'm like, man, y'all niggas always coming over here. That's what niggas, but right. we're taking our time. Right, right. They said the man went, like, 17 different directions. Right. I was like, yo. You know what I'm saying? So it was different from how my family that was in the South right. versus New York. Right. You know, and then, like, we got Little Italy, we got Chinatown. So, like, you, you, you ain't need a passport. Yeah. We was exposed to so much stuff. Yeah. You know, once you cross on 10th Street, mm -hmm. Chocolate City, it's, it's black. You know, white people didn't come our way. They didn't come nowhere near, you know what I'm saying? And you had areas where it, wherever the predominant race was, they had the upper hand. So, like, you got a Spanish girl living in Spanish Harlem, you got to be careful. You got to right. go there. You know, me, I used to, like, meet me at the train station. Mm. Right. I'm saying, I ain't going to be there. be that there. serious, too? Yeah, like, be you can't even walk yeah. over there. Nah, I mean, that's their that's they stuff. Right. But then you got neutral spots. Right. Nobody, nobody owned 42nd Street. Nobody owned 34th Street. Right. On 25th Street was our 42nd Street. Right. Right. Harlem. right. That's, that's right. the middle of Harlem. You know what I'm saying? 25th up is uptown. 25th down is downtown. Okay. But it's small. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? But we even got, you know, we got a, a central location that's neutral. Right. That everybody could come to 125th Street and shop and do whatever. Nobody owned 125th Street. Right. Yeah. You know what right. I'm saying? But one block over 26, 27, whatever. You know, we got St. Nick projects right there. Like, it's a whole different situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, growing up and seeing those transitions, it had, it impacted me a lot because... One, you know, I grew up scared of dolphins. Mm. You know what I mean? Dolphins don't sell their guns. Crackheads sell everything. Right. But the dolphins, a lot of them used to be the killers from the 70s. Hold on, man. For the you people at home and for me, yeah. break that down. We talk about the difference between dolphins and crackheads. When I was so, growing up. So the difference is, you said the dope fiends. The dope fiends never sold their guns. So if they was using them joints in the 70s, they still had them. And what their addiction was considered was a necessity. Because they get sick. Right. And they'll come through and probably ask for a single bag. Don't give it to him. He might come back. And you lose more than what you could have gave. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I had friends that used to, you know, and I never was into it. So it's like, nah. Right. They hiding you. You know what I'm saying? Right. You get, back then, like, you was, it was a, that was an expensive joyride. Right. You get caught, you know, somebody ODing off of that stuff, and you, you finish. Yeah. But, like, I had dudes like, yo, if such and such come through, give them two. Don't just give them, like, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, you know, it, it was a certain level of respect. That's what I said. I grew up knowing that these men and women, Worse who were suffering from this transition. They right. were somebody right. before that. He was the right. hitman before. Right. He, you, yeah. yeah. Right. Washing up, like, everything. Right. Now he messed up. But he still got integrity. Right. Yeah. He still got honor. Right. And he still got that yeah. goddamn thing. He still got that thing. Old 30 You know special. what I'm saying? <laughs> now, you know, the ones that fell victim to crack <clears throat> is a different situation. Some of them was even functioning. Right. Still, you know, they just had you know, yeah. an addiction. Some of them still got their skills from whatever, like the mechanics and you know, yeah, and work. Yeah, right. they won't do demeaning stuff or degrade themselves. You know what right. I'm saying? Because you got someone just it was all out, like whatever, like do the minutes. Right. 
Yeah, he, he, yeah. he gets out of pocket. Right. <laughs> you, know you don't want no cheeseburgers? What about yeah, some eggs? Yeah, he went from cheeseburger oh. like to some. Get that man some crap. Give him three. <laughs> Give him three. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I mean? That so, dude wasn't acting. That was a real J. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted on the set. He wanted on the set. <laughs> hey, man, I don't give a fuck about nothing. Nothing I got cheeseburgers. Y'all What's be you the best. This is a new set. Bit uh, <laughs> my alley. Bit my alley. Ain't nobody gonna move me. On the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But you know, like I said, you know, you know, it, uh, for me, that shit crazy. The survive, that's real. You know, it mean a lot. You know, that like was I real said, time, man. yeah, that real. Was real. Like when I look at like real time, real area. Yeah. This is the best Harlem breakdown I'd never. Even yeah, heard, even with even know. with like the music. See, the music was an escape. Right. You know, it was either we was gonna make it to the league. We was gonna make it in the entertainment business. If that don't work, we always got a home in the street. Right. You know, right. and people to understand, like when I look at this generation, look how many options they got. Right. Like they last we resort. Got a lot of yeah, they last resort ain't the street. Right. The last resort is I could just sit in front of the camera at 30 seconds at a time, make a fool of myself and make millions of dollars. Totally. Right. That's right. their last resort. Our last resort was the street. You mean a, a young kid can literally just set him up a camera, start a little tutorial, whatever it is. Right. And know? be different. Yo. You can be different. And be, I mean, look, <clears throat> and be a star. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not like there's an industry that determines who's hot and who's not anymore. Right. right. You know, you got all the access, everything you need to excel in any field. Yeah. You know, and I came home like at the tail in the COVID like entrepreneurship, you know, it's like almost, I'm gonna be honest with you, all y'all was in prison. COVID, everybody was in prison. And I'm gonna explain myself. Mm -hmm. Because... Oh, I thought you was about to say, yes, a nigga in there looked just like you. <laughs> <laughs> you was there? You was there? Yeah. I mean, nine times out of ten, they always say, well, I yeah. watch you in now, bro. You did my whole yeah. bed. I was like, yeah. damn. But see, the, th the point is this, like when you're in prison, you got minimal resource, right. minimal nutrition. <clears throat> right. But dudes is looking like action figures and they finding ways to make a me. worse situation comfortable. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? That ingenuity is being, you know, overlooked and warehoused. People don't know that these men exist. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because they're in prison. Right. Now with COVID, Y'all was subjected to certain environments, certain conditions that people became creative. You seen videos of people building gyms in right. their garage. Like, it right. was crazy. That's like being in prison. Right. I think people did all the shit that they was going to do, but they ain't never had time to do. The longer that shit went on, people started building all kind of shit. That's what I'm saying. Making little clubs and gyms and shit. But I don't think house. a lot of people knew that, that they could until the survival aspect kicked in. Right. Honestly, I want them to have one more quarantine. <laughs> See, I do. I do. Shit, give me, give me about four <laughs> more months of that shit. Right? That shit was. It's it was, six months. I mean, quarantine. you can live like quarantine. You just ain't got to come outside. Cool, then. Why, 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 why we got to suffer through your quarantine? Take your fuck up. I want to go in the house. Y'all go in the house. Shut it down. Yeah. All this shit back No down. food. Fuck that grocery store. Give me this food. I out there. I don't want nobody out there. <laughs> you gonna eat yeah. for days, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it birthed a lot of entrepreneurs. Fact. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No. Nah, Everybody, got crazy. how many people, people had the same Pakistani sweatsuit connect? People was putting out their own clothing line. Alibaba went crazy. crazy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Alibaba was up there, oh my goodness, we're going crazy. Shopify. Yeah. Shopify going yeah. stupid. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm saying is like, when those things make me hopeful right. for this generation, if they understand focus it. more. Right. They understand right. it. But you got to yeah. focus more on this aspect and not look for the link. But you know what it is, too, though? <laughs> is we come from a generation, because I'm glad and I'm thankful that I got the ass ending, but it was like a long, like me jumping in the street because I wanted to yeah. in my environment. Yeah. But the way my parents and all them, they'll... They're elders, so they come from that structure. So, yeah. like you said, how you feel like they scared of a crack fiend. So I understand why my mom was like, I don't want you smoking weed, because that shit lead to goddamn crack. No and question. fuck that. Yeah. You can't come it's back. And I, but I had to tell her that. 
I'm smart enough to understand that I know that. Mm-hmm. You've trained me to acknowledge that. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to smoke some weed. <laughs> but that crack? Hell no, nah, that <laughs> shit went. <laughs> but it was like, you know what? The seek for wanting knowledge. Mm-hmm. We want to go get that. The new day generation is whatever put in front of them, they believe it. And the media got to be real because they said it. They don't understand that it is propaganda. Yeah. They don't know you got to figure it out and want to do that shit. That's some bullshit. That headline is a distraction. They like, that shit real. We all know that. I'm going to wait. I'm going to go see my own headline. Because that's a distraction. You got to get your own information. You got to get your own yeah, information. You got too deep. You know what? J-O-N, you ain't played me. No paper. We, we ain't even got... Man. Yes, we got to start this. We got to actually start this. Come on, man. It's like we ain't got to restart. But we at least got to catch the people up who watching. I must have been going on for the last 37 minutes. Come on, man. I count them. <laughs> <laughs> I kept up with it. I was like, this I think shit, we on 58. Shit, we right, we right in there. We're going to be <laughs> uh, wrapping it up in a minute. But nah, man. Good shit. You had to reset the tone. Y'all was getting too heavy. You Cause still Because we hit it on the nail, man. Because I he told kids you that's, stupid. that's all we what's all we doing this year. All these kids stupid. And on stupid. this platform. It's just bringing real ghetto legends through here. Somebody get on TikTok. <laughs> and today we got a real one with us. We got a real legend. Come on, man. man. All the way from Harlem. Come on, now. Had a hell of a run. Had a hell of a run. In the music industry. I ain't Come even on, just going to say where. It's in the whole industry. Right. In life. Then had 22 different lives. Still man. running. Still running. Right. Cool brother. None oh. other than Loom. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Skate. Yes. All of us very old. Legend, right? Yes, now, sir. Now, me and Clay, we real hip hop heads. Right. We love rap music, the culture, all of that. Mm-hmm. I argue people all the time that one of the best rap names in the whole group, whole rap industry, is Blinky Blink. Blinky Blink. You was in a group with Blinky Blink, man. Then we talked about the world. That's yeah. a cold ass rap hey, look. name. That's, hey, look, Blink, that's my man. Blink like, Blink. Me and Blink was in high school together. Right. Blink got that name from Blinking. Oh, right. so he actually blinks he, a yeah, lot. He, yeah, he used oh. to blink a lot. You know wow. What <laughs> Blink came from a crew called BBO, Best Ballers Out. Right. You know what I'm saying? They was out of, you know, like it was different factions in Harlem. Right. But we caught the rap bug because, you know, historically, the only real Harlem rapper that made it was Curtis Blow, Kumo D. And he was a gangster. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Curtis Blow was like, you know, they called him Curtis Blow. That's what I'm right, saying. Right, right. That's you know what I'm saying? saying. It wasn't no pause after that. Right, right. right. Yeah, you right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Then Kumo D was from off the hill. He was from yeah. off, like Sugar Hill. So we were known for like having Brucey B, you know, Love Bug Star. We had DJs. Okay. You know mm. what I'm saying? And we were the promotional vehicle for hip hop. When the dudes showed up in the furs and all of that, the dapper dance, it was the Harlem dudes, you know what I'm saying? But the, the, the classical Adidas, Shell Toe, that was Queens. That okay. was, you know, the, the, they, you know break dance, B-boys, B-boys mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That was something that was rooted in the Bronx, you know, Queens, Brooklyn, and stuff like that. But when it came to Harlem, we was about money. So we was the aviance around all of this. Mm-hmm. When we came through, you knew a Harlem dude was in the building. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because our, you know, knack for style, you know That's what I'm what saying? That's what I was going to say. And y'all come yeah. shut shit down. Yeah. Well, y'all known for fashion and y'all known for getting money, and this known is what I've always money. heard just from Every listening Harlem to New York hip-hop. Every. You know what I'm saying? So that you you said you been came from that, then yeah. go back yeah. and you just show how far. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, because we had, we had all the hustles. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Like, when you think about horse betting and the numbers game, this and was home. off-track betting. Right. You know what I'm saying? They was just coordinating with the actual horse races, those numbers that came in was the numbers that people in the street was playing. So right. it was like hustling. Yeah. Just Cause it'd be the it'd be the, the time like the yeah. or something that the horse came in. And, yeah. yeah. And that call would come from so, yeah, that call mm-hmm. come from the track. Yeah. To the number runners in Harlem. 
wasn't no FaceTime, no quick text, no none of yeah, that. Yeah, these were like, prize yeah. picks and all that before yeah. that, yeah. So we li they, they literally created a whole industry from something that was legalized. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they made it a legal business. Yeah. So like, even for myself, like, I'm talking about like eight years old. I had about five, six different hustles. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I packed bags in the supermarket, right? I used to actually have three different registers. I'll just take fiends off the street and put them in different lanes and make sure my tip <laughs> box, like, yo, don't let, keep all my tip box by you. He don't right. get none of that. Right. Right. You know, he already owe money for some other. He, he right. here packing right. to pay off something. Right. And I'm, and I'm, and you and I'm in one lane right here right. packing and watching him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm packing hey, stop bags. Stop packing my soda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm packing the bag. Yeah, I'm packing Get bags spice. and watching him. Yeah. Then when the supermarket closed, you know, we turned the self-service pump into full service. I was pumping gas, getting tips. Yeah. They had a car wash at Getty gas station across the street. It's a setup out there because you go through the machine, but I did detailing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So right. I'm a little armor roll. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. I'm doing tires and all that. I used to go across the street to the Bronx and buy my air fresheners for 50 cents, selling for a dollar in Harlem. Had a paper route on Sunday. I was bagging up coke for my cousin. It's like, I was a kid and extorting white boys in school. So I'm All of them was kid shit. Yeah. So you got yeah. to yeah. Yeah. You yeah. do that in there with the kids. Yeah. yeah. I, was yeah. I mean, up coke with my cousin. Yeah. I had a lemonade a lot of kids stand. Had back you know what I'm Yeah, <laughs> lemonade, all that type of kids stuff. Was like, up, yeah. that, that, that wasn't, that didn't qualify. <laughs> now, the extorting yeah. white people was <laughs> you know, amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that didn't qualify for a Harlem hustle. That's a diverse portfolio. No question. You're talking about, I had a book bag full of G.I. Joes and Transformers that I used to steal from white boys and selling at the train station to all the black kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I never was a... And people in, the, in my, my neighborhood, I ain't never really was into no robbing no black people. Right. You know what I'm saying? I never... And that's not to say it's cool to rob white people. Right. I'm just right. saying, at that time... <laughs> but you felt, rob somebody, then you gonna have to see them? Huh? You gonna rob them, then you gonna have to see them? And then... Well, that wasn't... No, the, you know, know they ain't got Can shit. I get the G.I. Joe, <laughs> yeah, please? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we heard it with you. <laughs> I, mean, I ain't gonna even lie to you. I remember the first time that the whole idea of extortion came to mind. It was a white boy. He, um, I was sleeping class. I remember he bumped me. I don't care who you are. You ain't even gotta be tough. If somebody. I need to interrupt excuse your, me. Yeah, interrupt yeah. your sleep. Yeah. You might not can't fight. You might not need to fight, but you you go. willing to fight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about me. That's yeah. my forte. So I told him like, yo. I just want to beat you up. He just like, <laughs> and just the, you know, the tremors. But I'm more schedule. I'm watching the clock. He watching the clock. We watching the clock for two different reasons. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, yeah, you trying to figure out, there's only one door to go out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. How fast can I yeah. get to that bitch? You're trying and you to looking at him, let yeah, him know. no question. <laughs> and I might I might have to go to the bathroom right before class. So I'm already there. I'm already there. Yeah, I'm already there. Yeah, yeah. I'm already there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So... I remember getting close to three o'clock. He offered me five dollars. And light bulb just went off. Like, yo, that was easy. Hey, you know what? Tomorrow I'll bring me 10. All right. And it just kept snowballing. <laughs> but look, my <laughs> yeah, eye got big. I'm yeah, like, what yeah. else? That joke kept snowballing. I'm talking about. Wait, yeah, let me ask look, him. It was an Albanian kid. I never forget his name. You know, I ain't put his Hold name out there because I don't know yeah. what his life turned out to be. I don't right. know if I might have impacted him. I better look into it. So I found him. <laughs> I watched it by South Shore, didn't I see you know, And this is the. You know, yeah, this I is. You know, I've become to be an incredible gangster. Yeah, you know, and I'm saying, just for the record, this ain't me glorifying right. It's like, sometimes I reminisce on this stuff just to increase the gratitude of when I met in my life right now. But as a kid, this was Harlem. This right. was like, this was New York in general. I ain't gonna just say that we was exclusive, but for yeah. a Harlem kid, it was always how you get to that dollar. And also at a time when, because I don't think anybody after 2000 understand the generation when people was outside. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel the in-the-house shit is, you're missing if you're in the house. Listen, man, I had a time. But outside of New York, different to me. But, yeah. but still, I'm like, it's, be, it's so many people. There's so much going on. They be outside young as shit. Like, yeah. even when I would go visit New York, I'd be like, 
Yo, who is this little nigga riding the train? Yeah. With his little brother. Yeah. Like, right. like yeah. how is this nigga got a baby with him? Yeah. And they going in the store yeah. ordering shit, and I'm like, and everything is outside. They yeah. like city. you have to yeah. go outside in order and to do something. Second grade, riding, yeah. yeah. Riding public I'm talking about transportation. Yeah. All fourth, this shit. Look, what? Fourth grade. I was going to school all the way on 92nd Street. I don't know if you've seen my interview with Tip. Uh uh-uh. uh. Tip. End up going to the school I used to go to in Harlem That's years crazy. after. His father, yes, yeah, his father, father. Yeah. right, right. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I didn't really know that. I know Tip for a long time, but in the interview, it came out. And he started saying a lot of stuff, and I was like, "How you know, mom? How you know all that?" And then I dawned on me. I said, "Yo, we had an elementary school reunion. That's how bad we was. Any high school reunion, we had right. an elementary school <laughs> reunion. Damn. I swear by Allah, like everybody, it was there." was instrumental in some type of calm foolery that exceeded our ages. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, a lot of them didn't make it. Right. Lord, my little dude named Edgar, he might have been about every bit of 10, 11 years old, one of the biggest drug dealers in that area. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the biggest. He was, he was a kid. Yeah. Now, I don't know if he inherited it from his pops or however it was connected, but he was that dude. And he died in the street like anybody that he got murdered. Young. Damn. You know, my man Melvin, he was in the Big Apple Circus. He had AIDS, jumped out the window, killed himself. Like, we, we kids, though. And I'm way downtown. I'm not even in Harlem. I'm downtown going to school by myself, getting on the train. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you said. Yeah. We was bred like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, hustle... I don't know if this generation understands the difference from the grit that comes with how we had to hustle versus all the things that's accessible for a kid to hustle today. There's a lot of access. There's a lot of things that do most of the lifting for you. Mm-hmm. you know? And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, like I was saying earlier, I would just hope that they pay more attention and focus more on those things because mm-hmm. people endured a lot for that to be accessible to this generation. Just the thing, when I come from the generation that I know and watch and hear the conversations of, damn, the nigga did that, like you said, the J, when you saying that, I know for a fact, the crack, we never be little the crackheads because all them niggas was yeah. eight athletes, yeah. nigga, the Rolls Royce niggas, the, the, you know not only that, he the nigga that know everything. You disrespect him, he may be the nigga that do you. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, I understand that. So the new generation, when I say, it's too much access where they can't decipher yeah. what's real and, and what ain't. That's another we thing. have the experience to yeah, know that. You have to, be, you have to be nurtured to an extent to, like you said, disseminate what's being fed to you right. through social media, mass media, whatever the case may be. Right. But the education that we received growing up came from mentorship. Right. Somebody put you under their deodorant. You know what I'm saying? It showed you the gang game. Right. You know what I'm saying? But also you had those who showed you enough to benefit them. Mm-hmm. You know? And... I grew up watching a lot of dudes who fell victim to that and never grew, never evolved, never knew anything other than subjecting themselves to what they was taught by somebody who was misleading. Mm-hmm. You know, because I believe that there's two types of leaders in this world. You know, those that lead and those that mislead. Right. You're still a leader. Right. So whether you lead in the plan piety and righteousness or something that's upright, mm-hmm. then that would be more of a praiseworthy leader. Mm-hmm. But if you're leading somebody towards gradual destruction, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, you're going to be held accountable for your flock. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, like I said, you know, growth is something that's important for everybody. Because to remain stagnated is, you know, there's no growth in that. Right. You know, there's no evolution in that. Right. You become a one-trick pony. You only got one. You know, you only got one thing. You know, and like I said, just coming from the generation I came from, I wouldn't change it for nothing. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't change it for nothing. And there's a lot of things that's missing in this generation from you know 
the family aspect. Mm -hmm. I know we hear it all the time to the point where it might be starting to sound cliche, but the reality of it is that fatherless homes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Or some male figure, period, you know what I'm saying, that's going to nurture and cultivate you to be a man. That's missing, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I just came from a place where there's a lot of solid dudes being warehouse. Dudes that wanted to do, do the right thing. Dudes that thought they were doing the right thing because they had the right intentions, even mm -hmm. though the actions didn't line up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they might not never get a chance. They got 20, 30 years. Some got life sentences. The kids is growing up out here, trying, you know, being raised by the mother, you know, and her four or five different boyfriends, all kinds of trauma that, you know what I'm saying? And the sad part about our culture, and it's something that we definitely got to try to fix, is we got to stop normalizing stuff that's not normal. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just because it's become repetitive in our culture, anybody that step outside of it and look at it, you'll see this is not normal. Right. You know what I'm saying? This tradition that we keep holding on to is not normal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We only you know, contributed to our own demise. Mm -hmm. We desensitizing it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, <coughs> I love my people, you know. I do love the culture. It does a lot for me. You know what I'm saying? But where I evolved to is where I would want to see my culture evolve. Because when you look at I mean, like, it's crazy. Like, you know, we talk about people who fell victim to, you know, drug abuse and all of the things because of all the transitions. But if you think about, let's say, for example, most, uh, you know, legal immigrants that come to the country, no matter where they come from, but let's say in particular the Mexicans, mm -hmm. right? We got too good to cut grass, right? Mm -hmm. They was out there cutting that grass. Mm -hmm. That turned into landscaping businesses <coughs> all over the United States. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They sitting over at Home Depot about to jump in anybody pick up to go do some construction. That turned into construction companies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We got too good for these things. Mm -hmm. We got too bougie, mm -hmm. so to say. Mm -hmm. And they ain't got a pot to piss in. But mm -hmm. when do they throw it out? But these type of gigs is not suitable for us anymore. Because mm -hmm. yeah. our ancestors did it. My grandfather did that for 40 years. Blah, 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 blah. But he sustained you with that. Right. Yeah. You know? And if need be, you got to do the same for you and yours. You got to go do it. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because gambling with your freedom only contributes to the repetitive cycle of recidivism, people going to prison and coming back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All kinds of detriment. So, you know, I just, you know, I just wanted to tell y'all, because I, I, I always try to establish giving people the flowers for, mm. you know, you know, I love and admire what y'all do for the culture. I appreciate it, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I came home to, you know, the whole podcast, you know, uh, um, I don't know how you would call it, but it's a lot of podcasts. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a yeah. podcast, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But everybody don't carry it the same. Right. You know, and I'm not here to pass any judgment on anybody, you know, if, if, if it's for the money, get your money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If it's for the culture, then stand on that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Don't use the culture. You know what I'm saying? Under the guise that you're for the culture, mm -hmm. but you're really for the money. Mm -hmm. You know? And what I think that y'all do, you know, genuinely I know it's for the culture. I you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Fuck this while I'm out of the back. Nah, but that's, I mean, that means a lot because I, I think that's just who we are individually, you right. know, yeah. and it come together because, yeah, well, there's a lot of ways you could go to get, like you said, you could do it for the money, right. but... It's going to show. It's going to come, though. Yeah. This our space. The money going to come. <clears throat> That's yeah. the whole thing. Like, that, I was bred to understand that. money going to come. The hustle breeds money. Yeah. You just got to yeah. hustle. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, 
that's not a bad thing. That's not something that, you know what I'm saying, should be a turn off. Right. Yeah. You tell a kid now, that, like, you know what I'm saying, yo, if you stand in front of, uh, you know, Quick Trip, sell these oranges for me, man, I come back in like five hours, give you, you know what I'm saying, XYZ. What you talking about, yo? Yeah. You tripping. Yeah. Yeah. Made no motherfucking orange juice. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying, I'm <laughs> 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 Ain't no motherfucking orange juice. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Who I look like. The yeah. orange man. You yeah. are. Now sell yeah. it. Yeah, nigga. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, right. and the whole concept of the incentive just left their mind. Right. right. The incentive was more than you supposed to get for doing this. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but orange, that's it. Right. Right. You worry about what is what you got to do. Yeah, you, you just worry about what you one word get. from yeah. the whole... Sentence with mm-hmm. just orange. Mm-hmm. Right. Orange. They go straight to the end. The reward. That's how much I gotta put in? Yeah. How much I gotta do just yeah. for the reward? That's ah, right. yeah. shit. Shout out who you talking to. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, too much. You got me fucked. You know Come on, saying? man. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then they want something up front. Facts. Even in Islam, they teach you, right, that you pay a man before the sweat on his brow dry. That means the work is first. Right. But you pay him before the you sweat drops. Yeah, you pay him you when you pay him. You gotta yeah. pay him as soon as it's safe. That's the transaction. Yeah. You gotta pay him. Yeah. Yeah. Now hold up, I got you. You know, this is why I know. Ah, you finished? <laughs> I didn't know you was gonna do it that fast. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I, 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 you can't uh, wait to Friday? Yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> now you the Bible said, I gotta yeah. pay you. Can you work until Friday? Yeah, no question. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Boy, don't wipe that sweat, I'll be right back. <laughs> You keep that sweat <laughs> on your face. <laughs> don't wipe, don't wipe. Hey, look, soon he is, soon he is, soon he raises it. Oh, whoa, whoa. I got a cut. <laughs> you sweat the way all the way to your guy. Yeah, me. Yeah, you catch it in the cup and pour it back with him. Hey, man, uh, I'll be right back, but before I leave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know? That's real. That's yeah. funny. That's real, though. Uh, <laughs> it be like that, though. No cap. Evolution, man. But we got to do that as a culture. I think. I think the, we once we stop worrying about what the next man is doing and cause we put limitations on people of skin color to be like, you don't hold the motherfucking blueprint of what it looked like to be successful for me, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, what do the white man do? Or the other ethnicity do? Well, what y'all think I'm, it is, I'm entitlement? Say, now, I'm going to say this, man. Niggas you know, just don't like seeing niggas winning, man. For us, it's really been a mental and physical job done to us. Hmm. We carry a lot of trauma. Right. A lot of trauma. And it became normal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cats in the streets looking forward to, I got 10 in me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They hustling knowing that I could do 10. I'm prepared to give y'all 10. Mm-hmm. And this ride, you know, this joy ride is over and y'all catch me some weird yeah. slipping or whatever the case may be. I got 10. That's crazy. Right. <laughs> That's right. crazy. You ready to go sit down for tea? Yeah. Right. Stupid. That's crazy. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying this to glorify anything. Allah is my witness. But it took me to be 36 years old to go to prison. When I left everything alone. 2008, when I became Muslim, was the last day I smoked, the last day I drank, the last day I listened to music. When I say that, I mean I don't press play. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I abstain from everything because that's just always been my nature. It's all or nothing. I don't believe in straddling. I believe boys is confused. Men make decisions. Men stand on decisions, even if it's against them. Yeah. We have to, you know, we have to live by the truth, even if the truth is not my friend at this moment. It's against me, but I'm still gonna stand it because it's the truth, mm-hmm. right? right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my conspiracy was really revolved around ghost dope, which is dope that don't exist, and hearsay. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. And, that, and it came from a simple introduction. DC was good. Well, I got each other number, y'all straight, yeah. y'all cool. But because of my prior criminal history and these dudes not wanting to stand on, you right. know, their choices, mm-hmm. you know, because it start with that. Mm-hmm. Principle follow. Mm-hmm. But we in the game of choices. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, 
they threw me into their conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Like with my priors and in, in front of a jury of your peers, there's no way you can't say that this is not my career. Mm -hmm. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So the deck was deck was stacked. So I got another podcast I do too, The Wall on Drugs. Mm -hmm. And I just this for people too because we talked about it. Is it on A5 No, it's not on there, but it's on another platform. Oh, we got they that. support it. Yeah, but yeah. the ghost dope. Yeah. So basically mm -hmm. they entered into agreement with the authorities or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. These people and they implicated you in the shit or whatever. Yeah. Even though they never found no shit, never, never had no video footage, no shit. Nothing. But because they entered into this deal you know, with the government. Go so yeah. yeah, we sold 500 keys because. That's it. And they, and, but, and, but that's because these people didn't stand on their shit and went in a deal and said, yeah, we got caught, but he did it too. So and time, and he, they'll like, even put a, like you said, a fake timeline of when the <laughs> shit, certain shit started. They'll, 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 they'll put it up so. It was so dope if it wasn't for you. Since that's February why. 2007. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. At the time, I was living in Egypt. Damn. I was living in Egypt. I was wow. studying at LA, 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 you know, University out there. I was, you know, learning how to read, write, speak Arabic. You know, I, was, I was immersed in my religion. You know what I'm saying? And I was giving talks around the world to the youth. And I was on my way to go to... I had just left Saudi Arabia. I just made Hajj, came back to Egypt, stopped to give my family the gifts, and I jumped on a plane to go to Belgium to speak at the university. And Interpol grabbed me and told me I had an indictment in the Eastern District of North Carolina in the city of Durham, and I'd never been there. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Passport got missing. So the timeline that you're talking about, I can't even argue that. I don't have tangible evidence no more to say where I was when I, when I was there. You know what I'm saying? was overseas. Well, the passport oh, itself okay. was my best, that was my best defense. Right. So it was just a lot of, you know, details that, you know, because I'm working on a six-part doc series my, my whole life. I'm going to break down a lot of stuff. But the thing is, you know, I'm 36 years old at the time. Re far removed from you changed all your life. these, yeah. like, all you know, yeah. everything. You, you made that it? decision. Yeah. How you was going to Choice. Make it. That's what I said. I'm a firm believer of a man making a choice and standing on it. Right. Because that's the principle. Right. It's not about the street code, the street ethics. Right. It's about man time. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You made that choice. Yeah. You made that, that choice. You yeah. got to stand on your choice. <coughs> right. You, you can't make your you choice did. mine. Right. I didn't choose right. what yeah. you chose. Right. So you can't subject me to your choice. Right. That's just real. Right. They ain't got nothing to do. Like that's the, that's the problem with, I think, this generation. They try to incorporate everything with the street mm -hmm. when, quite frankly, I don't even think they understand the street. Right. Not the streets I know. Right. You know what I'm saying? I say that much. Yeah. Streets that exist today, I, I can't even tell you. I don't even know what that is. I don't is. know what that is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I really don't know what that is. Right. Boy, you know what I'm saying? She watered down. But my point Some was sidewalk. that, you know, it's so easy for these people to damage young black lives, black and brown lives. I don't even want to leave out you know, brown people as well, because mm -hmm. they're suffering as well. But it's like, you know, that experience really helped me grow. Because I know on the outside looking in, it was just like, I, I can imagine like, damn, man, boom. Probably a lot of people believed it, like, man. I mean, Puffy don't take care of nobody. Loon out here selling heaven on way out. And you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure people, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm almost certain. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Selling this shit. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you know, I, I, I anticipate that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because anybody that's, you know, working under, I don't even want to say the shadow, mm -hmm. but any major, you know, mogul figure, you coming up, under, mm -hmm. you got to work your way out of that right. from yeah. underneath that umbrella. Right. But that's where you'll remain. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As long as that umbrella is standing, that's where you'll remain, under it. Mm -hmm. You got to work your way out of it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm pretty sure it was a whole bunch of ways it was perceived, but that was the real reality is that... Right. And you were 36 at the time? 36 years. You got to go to prison. Yeah. And this nigga, so, I'm yeah, wrong, so the wrong. point I'm trying to make is 
when I was, you know, in the street, I came from a generation that wanted to get away. Right. We wanted to get away. We wasn't trying to glorify getting caught. We wasn't trying to, like, you know what I'm saying? We weren't trying to get caught. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even when I used to be out of town, you know, we used to be telling people we was, like, exchange students. We bought basketball team. Like, we was coming up with all kinds of stuff. Right. Even in Harlem. You know, you tell a girl, I, I do construction. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because once your father find out who I am and what I'm doing, this love affair is over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So it was embedded in us to try to go through painstaking efforts right. to not let that define who mm -hmm. we really right. want to be in life. Right. Like we really want to be right. somebody. And I think even in my generation in the music business, we tried to show that. Nobody's, like, you seen Snoop and Pharrell in Brazil. Yeah. Take a passport to get there. Yeah. Anybody could drive to Myrtle Beach. <laughs> we was trying to show you waterfalls, yachts. We was trying yeah. to show you what they say, you know, black excellence. Right. Yeah. You know, and there was nothing wrong with that. Because I think as a generation of people who, you know, absorb that and, and, and learn from that mm -hmm. and, and strive to achieve that. Mm -hmm. So I ain't gonna lie, when I'm in a barbershop sometimes, I catch wind of some of the stuff that, you know, out on the radio. Mm. And I'll be baffled. She trash. Baffled. I mean, like, even when I was in prison, you know, the barbershop the same. Dude got radio, he done made some fake speakers out of stuff. He got the joint bang and all that. Like, and I used to just be curious, who that? Mm. Well, that's a little such and such. You know, next time in the barbershop, who that? Mm. Oh, nah, that's a little, that's a different dude? Then after a while, I was like, how many lives? And it was, it, I was just confused. I was like, like what's going on? Right. You know, it, even like in my, 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 you know, my block, not to get too in depth, but we figured out how to watch everything y'all was watching. Right. I'm right. going to say that. Right. right. Easy. You know, so yeah. when I used to go work out, I used to let the young boys, you know, hold my joint and they, they do them. Right. Cause you know, we just trying to be fair. Everybody, this is breaking up everybody bed. Right. Six months ago by, we don't watch all Game of Thrones. Right. No, it's like, this breaking the bed. <laughs> right. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Time goes by, everything's smooth. Right. You know, no, no. we don't watch. Hey, two years? Ray yeah. Donovan, like, whatever. We, you know what I'm saying? You right. calling That's your kids. Shit. Yeah, you right. calling kids, talking about, yeah. Yeah. You seen Black Panther yet? Yeah, yeah, yo, it was it. Yeah, it was dope. Remember the scene? The kids yeah. on the phone, right. huh? They keep, they keep you kind of like on the outside. How you know about, you know what I'm saying? So this was with, you know, came with me. Yeah. My bed, my bed was, I wasn't in bed like, end of the world. Like, nah, I still get to study. I still get to do some things. I still okay. have a little leisure. So what I was saying was, I used to come in from working out and the kids was watching like World Star and all that. So, you know, you need headphones to hear the TV. Right. TV ain't like blasting like that. You gotta have your headphones and, you know, go to the radio station where the TV is playing. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, why is it like 17 kids with no shirt on with assault rifles standing in front of a trap house with a wraith? Like, the messaging was just confusing. I didn't have to listen. Yeah. I didn't put my headphones to listen to what I didn't care. Yeah. I was just looking at the messaging. Because I know what we was trying to show you. Right. You ain't have to, you know, you ain't got to, you, you got to hear the words to beautiful. Like, when you look at, mm -hmm. bro, you just right. see it. Like, you see a bunch of Brazilian like, yo, that's, pieces. That's, that's, that's it. That's yeah. what's up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at the messaging and I'm confused. I'm like, yo, they auditioning for prison. You know what I mean? What's the likelihood they zoom in on the serial number on one of them jokes? Well, niggas don't give a fuck about that. Oh, that yeah. didn't happen a lot of times. Yeah, care. and that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, I'm Wonder thinking, like, I'm thinking like this. You know? I'm thinking like this in prison. <laughs> I'm trying to go home. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, 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 about to go to they, they try to come in. And it's <laughs> right. like, why you want to be in a place where it's nothing but men? That's fucking good. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Because I'm looking at you got all the means to enjoy everything, life, everything else, but you want to be in here with men? You know what I'm saying? Glorifying something that really don't suit you. Because when I grew up and you had feds in your life, you were doing something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For the feds to look at you mm -hmm. in the 80s, 90s, something, you had to be doing something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What they've done is utilize, you know, federal authority to give a young kid a kingpin charge that never had $10,000 in one setting. Niggas crazy. Right. Niggas is crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? Niggas is fucking insane. I'm talking about all Just his stuff. Just throwing rocks at the penitentiary. Just in the Jordan box. 
His money, his gun, his jewelry, all his stuff. <laughs> everything he owns. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Everything. Yeah. 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 He got his whole a, life. He, you know, he got, he a, got a baby shoe box yeah. at yeah. that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, over your shit over two figures. Yeah, he had shit. Yeah, but he got a leadership role. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then he's in the prison system glorifying that. Yeah, yeah, they got me. You know I'll be mean, back yeah, in a minute. Yeah, Bro, 30 know. years is not a minute. Yeah, look, look, look. That's you know, 30 minutes. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, man. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I, I mean, I can go on and on, but I, it's like I experienced some things that made me so fearful for this generation. The ignorance. You know what I'm saying? The level of ignorance in the midst of dealing with something that could be a detriment for your entire life. Man. Yeah. I didn't come from that. Man. I don't even know how to identify with that. I don't see nothing fly about it. Like, nice, no, it's, it's suicidal. No, yeah, you was in there. Yeah, I'm sure you seen a lot from of young a dudes state of mind. never yeah. getting out. I'm hanging with dudes. Like, I had one of my, but like, no, I'm, I'm with the Muslims most right. of the time. Anybody know, anybody did time with me know I was always in some position of leadership when it came to the Muslims, whether I was the imam, whether I was the Sharif, like head of security for the Muslims, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And I was always dealing with the politics of those who understood we need this to govern mm -hmm. ourselves so this joint don't go up in flames. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The young generation coming in, they don't get this stuff. You know what I'm saying? And every now and then you got an old dude telling them, like, look, hey, listen, shorty, for real. I done did your time twice. Try to go home. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you got elders trying to school these young boys. Mm -hmm. So I mean, one time, I was in, um, before I went, before I went, uh, before I got my sentence, I was in a county jail one time. I overhear these two young kids, you know what I'm saying? They get lawyer visits. They both go see their lawyers. The one young kid, no, in fact, one was still in the block. Mm -hmm. One kid went to go see his lawyer. He come back in the block stacking, twisting his fingers up. Hey, homie, da 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 da. I'm good. So I'm like, mind my business. Mm -hmm. right? But then, like, you know, I was doing house details. I was never in my cell. I'm always out, you know what I'm saying? I get, I'm having my way. Mm -hmm. But I overhear them talking. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know, my lawyer told me, you know, if I take the scale. But long story short, I think, like, they found some drugs in the scale in a common area, mm -hmm. but you know, neither one of their person. Mm -hmm. But his lawyer just convinced him to take the, the scale, which is paraphernalia. Right. Like that. He said, yeah, I'll take that. I'm going to get you no know, probation. I'm good. And I'm a kid like, I know I'm good. Right. That's when she being an adult, tricky. Right. you know what I'm saying, being an elder, the obligation comes in. And I said, look, man, look. I don't want to get in y'all business. I don't, I don't get on nobody's case. I don't care about it. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not, a, I'm not no jail lawyer, none of that. But you just told on him. Right. He said, what you mean, nigga? I don't, I don't do all that. I said, you did. If you took a plea and took a charge, you did. You just said this down? joint was in the common area. Right. I mean, it don't belong to nobody. Yeah. That's what you supposed to say. That's what you supposed to say. Until they run out of steam. No matter how long you got to sit in here. You know, and I'm not teaching criminology. Right, right. Trust me. But I hate to see young kids immersed in a lifestyle where they haven't educated themselves on the consequences. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, go back to choice. Right. So he's like, he like, what you mean? I said, look, if you took the scale, then who do the drugs belong to? So they're looking at each other. And I'm like, no, don't, be, don't be mad at your man. Because, you know, his whole face changed from... He was looking at him like... Yeah, yeah. It, it, it changed from being shocked to, like, you did tell him. Yeah. Right. I said, look, just call your lawyer, go back, tell him you... That's yeah, how, you know, you know? And I just said to say not to digress, but it's like... Like I said, I could go on. It's like a lot of things that I've learned. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I've learned about where we going as a people. And that was the whole subject we were talking about was like, how do we evolve? How do we escape this normalization of things that's not normal? How do we, you know, stop desensitizing ourselves to things that actually matter? Right. You know, when, how do we 
better ourselves. Because in the Quran, Allah says, save yourself and save your family, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a permissible form of selfishness. You know what I'm saying? We created contingencies that we don't allow each other to be about self. Right. Oh, you a sucker. You... No, nah, how important to help you if I ain't help? If I ain't even got you. I, yeah, how important I ain't even got a boat, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And why I got to help you first? We both when you running. know I got a mother that's sick. I got a daughter, you know what I'm saying? You know I got all these things. So for you to hold that over my head, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You come first? S something should be telling me right. about the company I'm keeping. Facts. You definitely can't be my homeboy, man, all these terms we're using because <coughs> you want me to subject myself to your welfare. Right. And just disregard the welfare of the people that I'm entrusted with. You can't possibly be a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right? So, you know, it's just, that's what I think. It has to start with, first and foremost, understanding that there's a creator of the heavens and the earth and everything understood, in between. Absolutely. Understood. Free from need, free from deficiency, free from flaw. Goes back to us being, you know, creatures of need. You know what I'm saying? We are deficient. We created deficient. We created in the state of need. And our needs and refuge should always be sought in the one that's free from that. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. That becomes your base. That's your foundation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, anything that contradicts that, common sense will tell you it's not <laughs> the right thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to get schooled once you learn that. Once you learn your purpose of why you was created, you was created solely for the purpose to worship the one that created you. That's the greatest relationship for any human being to have. Because you can't implement nothing consistent or, you know what I'm saying, or you know, consistent with good if you don't have that foundation. Mm -hmm. We'll find ourselves worshiping other things that have no value, that can't harm you or can't benefit you, you know? And, you know, that's pretty much where I've came in my life. And just to give you another bouquet, mm -hmm. you know, watching what you've endured you know, with your family and, you know, seeing how you implement patience and just the resolve, you know what I'm saying, to endure something that nothing could prepare you for. Mm -hmm. Nothing could prepare you for, for death, you know? And Allah says in the Quran, he says, Kulu nefsin till mot. So verily, every soul will taste death. So it's inevitable. We know that, you know what I'm saying? That's why we live a certain way Preparing for what's inevitable. But still, when they come, as human beings, it's something that you endure and it's not an easy thing. You know what I'm saying? I just literally came from a funeral this weekend. You know, my pops passed. You know what I'm saying? Right, I came home. My grandmother, she had stage four cancer. You know what I'm saying? She was able to hold on until I came home. My grandfather, he couldn't make it. You know what I'm saying? And even in prison, I literally had to go in the shower and weep. Yeah. Ain't crying a bunch of in front of convicts, you know what I'm saying? Right. But I had to go in the shower. There's water on me anyway. You can't tell them, right. you know what I'm saying? I'm crying. Right. You know? But those ways that we cope with adversity really defines what kind of man you are. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I say that to say, bro, I appreciate it, you bro. know what I mean? Yes, sir. You are a rare breed for this generation, you know? It takes a lot, and basically what you said is that really the only way, because if you don't have that foundation, you'll be lost. Absolutely. And to pick it back off of what you were saying, I was just thinking like, okay, you was already making that transition. At 36, we are considered grown, grown. Oh, yeah. Adult. You're done. You're, I already know what I'm doing. I'm just focusing on my religion and being one with the high power. Yeah. Now you got to go to prison. Yeah. How, how is your mind state and understanding saying, okay, you was already preparing me to be, yeah. I got I to gotta go somewhere anyway, yeah. but you was preparing me earlier yeah. to yeah. take this role. Yeah. So I'm not going to tear or decipher yeah. my journey. I'm going to continue even in here. Well, part of my faith is to accept, you know, Allah's divine decree. Right. 
you know, preordain it. You can't change it. You don't have the capacity to change what's already written for you. Mm -hmm. So you accepted the good and the bad of it. Because we attribute all of that to Allah. The good, the bad, everything. Right. It's not right. something that you give a share to a creation. Like the devil or whoever, shaitan. Nah. It's another creature in need. He doesn't have the power right. to determine right. life, death, you know, you know, prosperity, adversity. He doesn't have that power. So with that relationship comes acceptance of anything and everything that's preordained. Mm -hmm. You know? So like I said, all of the things that I did, I should have went to prison for. Mm -hmm. Once again, he's the best of planners. Like, I was survived all those things. But now here I am, you know, on a whole different path, and then I go to prison. Right. You know? Right. But what I was able to acquire prior to going to prison, that's what helped me navigate. Had I did a bit as long, that would have been a different bit. I promise you, it would have been a whole different bit. As a mayor, it was a, it was a beautiful bit. You know what I'm saying? It gave me time. What you do with it? I was in the Fed. So I started my first six months, I was in Belgium. I was in a federal prison in Belgium. That's fighting, crazy. Yeah, fighting my extradition. I went all the way to Supreme Court in Belgium, fighting my extradition. Because they were trying to, you know, use that situation to push me in a situation. Yeah. <clears throat> with situation right. You know? And they was trying to add something, or they was trying to, you know, get me to accept, you know, an extradition that would enable them to take anything outside of the instant offense and use it against me. So meaning if I wasn't paying attention or understood the circumstances around my case and just hasting because, you know, I'm out here, they speak Dutch, they speak I'm ready French. To go home. Right. I can't get them off I'm the last that. spoke Arabic, and most of the inmates there was Moroccan, Algerian, some okay. of the COs. So yeah. I was able to, you know, to 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 you know find solace in mm -hmm. speaking Arabic. Right. But just the conditions, everything, you know, you're away from your family, everything. I left my my wife and my my, my kids is in Egypt. Like right. I'm over here in the capital of Europe. I'm 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 you know, that's a lot. Yeah. The average dude... And a black man. Yeah. Right. You know, the average dude under lesser circumstances done folded like a beach chair. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? They tell when they get cold. Yeah. In their little room. So, like I said, accepting that that was the case, it enabled me to just try to benefit. Not sit here, lose my headline, worrying about something I can't change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And because of that extensive life, I told you, as a kid doing all that, I never got a chance to pull over and park. Like, I've always been running, on go. gunning since 84, 85. On go. Right. You know what I'm saying? Been on a super go. So that was the first time I was able to pull over and actually park and reset and, you know, take account a lot of things that transpire in my life and how it all came to this point and how it makes sense and what I need to do moving forward. So I had a plan, you know? And a lot of dudes in there is doing a long two days. Sad to say it, like whatever they came in prison on, they leave on that same thing. Right. So I mean the 10, 15, 20 years in the middle don't even count. You just did a long two days. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I did a bid that was beneficial. I uh, came home, you know, people, they, yeah, I still got all my marbles, I'm straight, yeah. and institutionalized and nothing like that. Right. I used to, you know, I'm telling you, I ain't gonna lie to you. I used to switch stuff up just on purpose. Mm -hmm. like, you know what? I'm gonna put condition in first, then the shampoo. Like, anytime I found myself doing, doing something to it, <laughs> 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 I'm gonna switch up on purpose. Like, is that, that is that. Now, I'm fucking routine. I'm gonna put pants on first. Yeah. Then yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. Cause you'll find yourself when it becomes habitual, when you just literally talking to somebody, you're like, yeah, man. So, oh, hold up, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that, yeah. that just like became too fluent. Right, right. right. Cause you know, I, I know y'all heard stories of dudes that come home burnt out. Nigga, yeah, they don't never, day, they don't yeah, never come out of, like yeah. once yeah. you institutionalize it. Came home looking for yeah. a sandwich. I'm talking with, about dudes, fast, all fast foods, getting in the, in the shower, sandwich. in their house with shoes on. Yeah, yeah. 
keeping all the fucking hygiene right there on the yeah. shelf by the by the uh, Yo, I had a dude tell on the little, me uh, personal nightstand. I had a dude tell me his nephew came home from doing that time. He was he was he had, old time. He in there telling me a joke. He said, "Yeah, man, this girl went to use the bathroom. It was like, babe, where the tissue at?" Cause you can have your own roll of tissue. You take your roll of tissue <laughs> with you in the cell. Yeah, he didn't he take the roll of tissue out the bathroom. The girl <laughs> sitting, in the, yo, the girl in the bathroom, man, that relieved herself. Shitting. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> <laughs> She a wild one, though. She came hey, over. Give me some tissue. Give me a honey, bro. Shit, you can have Yo, this motherfucker. He you got the right tissue. Up? He got the tissue. You know, took the tissue in the bedroom. You know when they be like football. You got to do a stand up for count time. Man. Count time, yes. Yeah. Right. Yo, yo, what you stand? What's wrong with you? That's crazy, you know, man. Yeah. I can't do yeah. it. Four o'clock. Ain't count time. Man. Ain't no count time. Four o'clock. You getting up in the morning at four, four boy. Yeah. You eating. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. Yeah. It's just, it's just like, but I'm going to tell you this. They wake you up at 4 o'clock just to see you there. You in there, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> Where you put me at? Where at 10 o'clock. Yes. I, mean, I can't escape this shit. I'm gone, I'm gone. Yeah. I'm Spe- gone, I want to Yeah, especially in the hole, though. You know, I, I did over a year in the hole. Ooh, in the hole. Hold on, now, which, which hole? Yeah. There's two different yeah. types of holes. It's a hole where it's like, I, you can do time, but you can't do time. No, solitary confinement. Like, that's dark. Solitary. No lights. Dark. I mean, they turn them off at a certain point. Okay. Just use the light under the door. Right, you know, right. I'm like reading a book at night. You from the movies. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> no, no, because, saying, like, no, because you, when you, when you really bad... Hey, hey. <laughs> no, bro, because when you really bad, bad, they got a place for your bad ass, bro. Now nah, it's Get a hole. Shit. I know it's a hole, but I'm saying, like, it's a, it's a... I done been to the hole, too, but I... This nigga that did time, so <laughs> my shit ain't talking about nothing. Nah, no, 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 no. I understand that, but county is worse. County definitely. Some of them. County, not that no, solitary. You, solitary. When you ain't got no, shit going nah, on. County, so what you get an hour? County is gladiator. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, because county, like, you no, know, we got the worst county in the planet. I don't care what nobody say. Rikers Island. Yeah, Rikers is yeah. a prison. Yeah. No, That's not a county. Oh, I seen this. It's over 8,000. Like 8, Rice Street a prison, yeah. too, though. Yeah, Rice Street. I've been in Rice Street. I'm trying to tell you. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't never had no problems in Rice Street. I they fuck with you. Matter of fact, I did, I did, I did, I did. I had pushed one dude ears together, though, man. He, he, yeah, he, he was probably a, was an East Side nigga trying. Yo, New York, you know what? You alright? <laughs> yeah, actually, his nah, brother good. was somebody. <laughs> nigga did. You know, his brother was somebody in the street. I knew him though, but dude was just going overboard, and it's like, okay, that's a, that's a Atlanta brother, shit. But I don't really care about your brother. Pop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's all Atlanta nigga want to see. Oh, yeah. boy, okay, New York. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, but he ain't lying. Like, but but see, like, like hey, Lou got them hands. Yeah, yeah. All right, New York. Yeah. All right. Go, like there, you go yeah. over there. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, because, like, in the county, you ain't get no time or nothing yet. Right. You know, yeah. even if you, like, take over on the police, like, it ain't like you just going, you know, it's nothing that's going to be added on. Right. I respect rules. That's why I respect rules to the day. But don't get me wrong. I would never discouraged what you experience because any I mean a day away from your family against your will that's, right. that's a lot facts you know what I'm saying facts a but week, solitary a, a year though solitary it was broken up I did six oh, okay. months in Belgium like quarter charges 24 hours or yeah, 23 hours 20, 23 hours lockdown you oh. get one hour wreck shit Ooh. you know what I'm saying Mm-mm. Belgium 20, was different what hours. you do you just try to sleep it I just read read yeah and that's why I wanted to get to a point and I'm not an expert on mental illness, just mm-hmm. so everybody know. But as a Muslim, I live in my heart. I don't live in my head. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you why that makes sense. Right. You know, because your brain, you can absorb a lot of stuff. Right. You know? But just like any type of hardware or hard drive, if you overload it, what happens to it? It just do, it just do shit. It'll crash. Yeah. Right? Or it'll run slow. Mm-hmm. Right? When your joint overload, it don't run at the same capacity or mm-hmm. speed. You don't use all the gigabytes. Yeah. Or you're trying to process too much. Because yeah. that's where, you know, uh, you know, mm-hmm. you processes things. Right. So trying to process a lot of things that you sponged up, it, it can become difficult. Right. But the heart, it has a filter. You know what I'm saying? You can't have two things that contradict itself reside in the heart at the same time. It's impossible. Right. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that means that if you allow 
Like, if your heart is righteous, mm-hmm. you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. Anything that contradict that, you're going to reject it. Mm-hmm. It can't reside at the same time. You can put all that up here, though. You can mm-hmm. just store anything up here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And trying to make sense of it sometimes could drive you crazy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if you live here, this will definitely act as a criterion. You know, differentiate between what's correct and what's not. Mm-hmm. Right. And this is a favor from your Lord. He, he, he gave you this for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Because you could be brain dead and still live, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But if this stop, show's over. So people misinterpret what the real engine is. The engine mm-hmm. ain't your brain. Everybody talking about your brain. You're not. You're, yeah. Man, that joint can stop working and you can still live. You could be a vegetable and still lit. But when your heart stopped beating, the show is over. You can't keep your brain running right. with your heart dead. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So this is the real engine. You know what I'm saying? You purify this, everything else will follow. You know what I mean? Trying to clean this is it's, 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 it's impossible. I be trying to tell people yeah. that too, though. This is going to make the sense for this. The heart is right. You know, your thought process of being, you know, you can tell. conformity with your heart. You, know, you, said, you said it in a more articulate way, because I always say lead by the spirit, because your brain, I said, if a motherfucker want to know my mental, bitch, you don't want to know what's up here. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much. It's too much for me, bitch. It's too much for you. Come on, Black. This is why I'm so grateful, and I walk graciously, and I'm glad God deterred my life and made me go this way, because mentally, I know... Okay, what's the spirit and what's not? Yeah. So when that comes, I'm like, oh, that's just something my brain done consumed from seeing so much of this shit and what the media done said. That's not me. It don't reckon with my heart. Yeah. Okay, that thought, that's part of my heart. That's my thought. Yeah. So when we was talking earlier on a couple episodes about mental illness and all that, I can understand I'm empathetic because a lot of people swear that whatever they thinking is them. Yeah. 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 They can't say, they like, I'm thinking it. I'm like, bro, but you, you done gave that too much energy that you done broadened that particular thought, and it's not even you. Yeah. yeah. Just because you thinking it don't mean it's your thought. Yeah. Well, you got to understand, yeah. also, a lot of people were stimulated out here, too, because, I mean, I ain't going to lie, I used to smoke. Yeah. Right? More. Right. But that would definitely stimulate. Inhale. Yeah, it would, it, would, it would stimulate, you know. So, like, I would tell you this. This is why intoxicants are not permissible in this land. Right. In Arabic, it's called khamar. Mm-hmm. Khamar is any intoxicant. Anything that makes the thought process fluctuate mm-hmm. is an intoxicant. Mm-hmm. You right. know what I'm saying? Even over-the-counter, medicine can do it. Right. Mm-hmm. Anything that makes the thought Alter. fluctuate, mm-hmm. that's an intoxicant. You know what I'm saying? So now, not to... No, because I ain't gonna quit, so it don't matter what I tell you anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was smoking a little weed, my wife. <laughs> but I'm just saying. What up, G? Yeah, I'm just saying, like, even for me, like, back then, you know, that's what it did. Right. It had me in constant, deep thought. Right. Right. Sometimes right. the time would go by, and I ain't realized I was thinking that long. You know what I'm saying? I was just, you know, I, I should have been moving. Like, right. I should have been busting a move by now, yeah. but... 30 solid minutes. Yeah, you I'm, like, yeah, I'm just gone. Right. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> then next time you look up, you know, you're like, man, I might have overthought this situation. Right. Like, you know, because, yeah. Sometimes you got to snap out of it, like, come on, fool. Yeah. I get right. Yeah. I get right. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, you can overthink shit and not do shit. That's, that's part of trauma, too. problem with people that overthink. Sometimes you got to react. You got to do. Like you said, if you listen to your heart. But if one going, but if one wants like to become that. one with the higher power, this is not a relationship that just comes easy. No, it's work. It's, it's any work. relationship is it's work. It's work. Yeah. And if I you think work, work at maintaining it. it. Right. Obtaining it is easy. Right. But sustaining it right. is a trial because, right. you know, your desires is what you at war with every mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every day you were The flesh is getting eaten at every time. With your desires. You know? Right. So now, if your desires contradict obedience, you know what I'm saying, you got to make a choice. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm going with obedience every yeah, time. You got to remove, and, that, and that's called self-governance. You know what I'm saying? That's what, you know, we need that 
You know what I'm saying? We got to create it and know what's better than we know ourselves. We keep trying to figure this stuff out. We all think that is, our issues is exclusive. <laughs> Nobody's going through this but me. It's like, old. Yeah. Ain't yeah. nobody going yeah. through it. Yeah. Shut your whole ass. Whole, yeah, you the only person in the whole world. It's all on me. Shut yeah. your bitch ass. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, man, you know, we could do this forever. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, you know, I'm excited not just to do the show with y'all. We love. You know, to definitely be a part of the family. So they need to hear A lot of people man. don't know. You know, we're going to take this opportunity to let them know. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Perspective Podcast yeah. will be distributed through 85. Let's hey. go. You got to hear first. Big yo, wow. big work. Let's work go. Let's go. Let's go. We love to see it. You know, we love to see it. And I want yeah. to conclude it with why. Because it's important. Because people look at, like, you know, they're going to come with their own determination. Right. Why, you know. And just to be honest, I mean, it was, it was a lot of opportunities, you know, just because of the nature mm -hmm. of what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful that it doesn't conflict. I mean, y'all got the flagship show. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It doesn't conflict with anything, and, that, and that's important. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be, you know, on a hamster wheel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was one reason. But ultimately, like I said, what I saw and what y'all were doing and how y'all built this, you know, from the ground up. Yes, sir. I've even heard stories of y'all alluding certain situations that probably wouldn't have been to your benefit, which shows me how much passion you know, you have for what you built. Yes, sir. You know? So it's not about, you know, sacrificing your integrity and all of those things to win. Mm -hmm. And this is why y'all enjoy yourself. Like, exactly. people look at this show, <laughs> people look at y'all and say, this might be the easiest money y'all could see. <laughs> y'all ever made in y'all lives because it's like to come we out do and it just be yourself. We do it, we yeah. do it anyway. You go and yeah. be on the porch, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. You dig what yeah. I'm saying? The so, content part might, they only see that. They yeah. don't understand the, the business the part. Business part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Or building it. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Sustaining like saying, it, like you said. Having yeah. to do that delayed gratification. Yeah. Right. Saying no in the beginning so you can get what you want in the in the long yeah. run. Yeah. The process yeah. of it. And that was one of my reasons because I know that, you know, y'all run a tight ship. And we also run it together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's a unit where it's like we all came in and said, look, we don't know everything but we're willing to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And even if you may not feel, like you say, you may not feel some type of way, but if the selected group is saying, let's run it, yeah. I'm going to run it like I agree, because I did agree if they said run it. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it always works in our best favor, bro. You feel me? We don't look at it as a I, I, I thing or a me, me, me thing. And... Out of, every, out of everything I'm in, sure. everything I done worked on, this is the only situation that's like that. And I get to take what I learned from over here and go to other places and be like, if the energy ain't like how it is over yeah. here, I already know yeah. what this is. Yeah. I'm an employee. Yeah, it's work. Yeah. It's work. It's, work. <laughs> it's just work. Yeah. It ain't, yeah. I can make it look like fun. I can make it look like but fun, it's work. but it's work. Yeah. Over here, it's like, it. you know what? Now, let's take the work and the business from over there. Got to get you to sign the table, man. Somewhere on here. Spot We're this putting this all the legends on the table. And we got you. Of course. We got you some dope-ass 85 South accessories and merchandise. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Sam, stop we got the it, man. Don't let it be the ghetto legend. Hey, 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 h